back here in the short bus. Uh, time to make motors red again. So jump aboard. Let's go inhale some aerosol and suck up some paint through our nose. <laughs> I don't particularly like to get filthy every time I try to do something to the engine. So I picked up some cheap paint and it's not exactly the paint that I wanted. Uh, but it's just going to have to do because that's what I could get a hold of. So it's going back to a red color, which is <laughs> probably not factory Hudson, but whatever. At least it'll be red and black and then it'll be time to, to replace the gaskets that I need once I get a full gasket set. In the meantime, just do a little quick recap of where we've come from. We might have it.
we just spray bomb it. Once I get everything nice and caked up with shiny or dull paint, and I'm just gonna tell you, this is not, not the red that I wanted. This is too much orange, but whatever. It's clean now. Uh, when I go and I change this oil pan gasket and rear main seal, I'm gonna try to get everything separated out. I'd like to paint the transmission, uh, you know, like a aluminum, maybe even a, a gray cast iron. I like that. That's always real clean looking. And it's probably, I'm not, I have no idea. I don't know if this is an original Hudson color or not. And at this point, uh, I don't want to say I don't care, but if it's got Hudson on it, it's probably three times as much. So I just grabbed the red version of this stuff. Yeah, and it's only 600 degrees. So all the hot stuff's probably going to bake off. But again, uh, it's just kind of like a, I just want something to do to it. I'm stuck until I can get a full gasket set, which is of course not cheap, about $400 by the time it gets here just for some gaskets. So I don't know. I don't know why I'm going back with this engine other than I just think it's super cool and I like the 308. And I found out that, uh, you know, just watching these uh, Hudson groups that, they make an adapter plate. Of course, it's about $1,200, but you can actually uh, take your hydromatic off and put a Chevy transmission in it. And that's that was the whole idea behind pulling the motor aside from kind of playing with the idea of replacing the rear main seal, which is, from what I understand, pretty futile. Uh, everybody I've listened and talked to is kind of like, eh, you can replace it. It's probably not going to work, but try it anyway. So I pulled it with the idea that I just put an LS in it because I want something I can drive down the interstate. And uh, lo and behold, there's an adapter plate for uh Chevy transmission, which I, I know most people want the turbo 400s, but I'm, I really like the 700 R cause I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to burn rubber. I just trying to go somewhere. Man, I just wish I'd have went ahead and painted the transmission. <laughs> Paint the transmission in the in the fuel pump. And I mean, obviously it ain't no, I'm not trying to build a show car. I just want something clean. Uh, time for a new one of those. There it is. Well, halfway there. Much better than it was. I think this red nestled down into that black. This was a, it's a semi-gloss. It's not really uh, where it needs to be, obviously, cause the motor ain't in it, but man, it's gonna look good. And I think I'm gonna paint that transmission like the, that aluminum, kind of like to match the, the alternator bright when i get finished doing the oil pan the rear main seal and while i got this thing out i think i'm gonna go ahead and replace the front and rear seal on the transmission if i can if i can track one down it ain't three thousand dollars blows my mind how much stuff costs for these things but uh and then the next thing will be that's this why i paint everything i just paint it all because I won't have to take this off. This is going to get replaced anyway. I'll have, my intention is to have a new one of those made, get better wires. This was just what was on the shelf. I definitely don't like the, the long ends. It needs the nineties. I like the nineties on that end, but, uh, it's getting there. It's, it's just, well, I'm sure anybody out there that's ever worked on a car knows it, it's, it's not every day you do it when you can do it and this man it seems like it's taking forever with this thing but slowly but surely 
I get the oil canister lines and then I get my power steering lines replace that's those down there nice and glaring off of that but yeah that's where it's at right now next things next is to separate this transmission from the engine and I'm gonna have to come up with a well I mean it ain't like it's some great feat of engineering but basically come up off of this bar down here and come over to these bolts and hold hold the back of the engine up so that whether the transmission is on it or not i can i'll still be able to run it because i really don't want to i really don't want to put it out all back in the automobile and not know if that rear main seal is going to do right because the experts the few there are that are out there give me a good fair warning that uh there's a couple of different options on the on the rear seal i could do the rope seal which man some people are just absolutely die hard over that rear rope seal and then some folks are about this new uh replacement type thing made out of the made out of that synthetic rubber i think i think that's the way i'm gonna go with it uh i would like to go that route and like i say leaving it on this stand out of the in, out of the uh out of the car i'll be able to run it i'll mount me a little rack bracket or whatever you want to say for the radiator and then uh once I get the front and rear seal and the transmission, I'll put it all back together and crank it up and just let it sit there and idle. This thing didn't leak a drip, man. And uh, I was running like 1030 weight oil. Uh, so I was driving it, driving it all over town, just really enjoying it and learning because these, tra these things are not like an old car. They're completely different the transmissions shift different they don't make sense and if you're driving a hydromatic with the anticipation of it being like a two-speed power glide or maybe like a turbo 350 you you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna think something's wrong with the transmission ain't nothing wrong with it that's just i think honestly that's probably where the term slush o -matic came from but at any rate this transmission is good and it runs out fine it's just its own animal but once i got to driving it i guess the oil heated up thin enough to where it developed a small drip out the back and then i tried the magical miracle in a bottle which absolutely it solved the problem it stopped the drip and then i drove it for a few weeks with no issues and I checked oil and it was like, I don't know, half a quart low, maybe a quart low. I was like, I'll just go ahead and top it off. I think I'm going to put some Lucas in it. And so I put some of that Lucas oil stabilizer and apparently it was a little thicker than what that seal could hold. I don't know. Whatever it was, it said, uh, bleh, and puke, started puking oil all over everything. So at that point, it was no longer a drip. It was an outright just pouring out so went ahead and pulled it and that's that's the next step and uh honestly i pr now that i know better if my front seal and transmission hadn't started leaking i probably wouldn't even separate them but uh one of the interesting things is you see all these little these are bolts like it ain't like a normal torque converter connection. These, there are that many. Let's see if I can get it here. There are that many bolts. <laughs> uh, that many bolts on this thing. So, yeah, it's a bunch. At any rate, that's where we're at with it right now. It just, I, I've always liked the red engine. And uh, this is the, this is the red that I used. Uh, 
And again, industrial red. It's not what I wanted to go with. I wanted to go with the dupla color semi-gloss that the, the, the guy on the forum was telling me about, but it's just, it just wasn't available around here. And uh, I don't know. I may use this as a base coat, but it's all right. I, I really like Farmall red. That's that's the red that I really like. It's it's really dark, really uh, really red. This has got a lot more orange in it than what I would prefer, but I honestly don't know what what factory color came on the Hudson engines. I, it seems like I've seen some that were done in like an industrial green, and I've seen a lot of them with gold on them and. Uh, like I say, it just goes back to my personal preference being red. So there it is, Hudson 308, old redhead. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I'm certainly not trying to be a movie star or anybody famous or anything of the sort, but uh, just watching the channel kind of grow. One of the big reasons I'm doing this is uh, there's a show called, when I say it's a show, it's just a guy and his dad, which I really admire and appreciate. And uh, I got sick here a while back and I, I just, I'm so sick of these dramatic shows, you know, just they gotta have, there's a deadline and it ain't gonna be done. And it's just, they just try to over dramatize it. But the, the show that I was watching is called Budget Builds with a Z. And this young man with his dad just out of South Carolina. And uh, I was sick, just kind of bedridden, couldn't go anywhere, do anything. And I started watching some of the stuff that they was doing. Uh, no affiliation whatsoever. Just really, really appreciated what this young man was doing with his dad and appreciated the fact that uh, it was not dramatized. It was just two guys working on old cars. And I think I binge watched every episode that those guys have done. And if you hadn't seen it, go look up Budget Builds uh, and subscribe to him if you're not already. And I appreciate you uh, liking and uh, subscribing to my channel too. But at any rate, the reason I'm doing this is because maybe there's somebody out there that was like me that can't go out and do it themselves. And watching what I'm doing is keeping them from uh, being just mind-bogglingly bored. So at any rate, thank y'all for watching. Thank you for clicking in. And uh, if you hadn't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if not, thank you. It's like 90, 99.958% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed anyway. So. We still gonna get the milk regardless. But thank y'all. Have a good one.